The first video showed what are exponential functions. This video is going to be a bunch of practice for a bunch of different ways that we can use exponential functions. So we'll start with example two. Which of the following are exponential functions? Remember, linear means that it's growing by the same number every month. It's adding the same number every month or subtracting. Exponential is growing by the same percent every month. We're multiplying or dividing by the same number every month. So this would be a good practice if you wanted to pause the video and try to get which ones are exponential. Part A, the cost of living allowance for state employees increases salaries by 3.1% every year. Okay, so it's growing by a percent every year, not by a flat amount. How much it grows depends on how much we're at. Growing by a percent means that this is exponential. Letter B says state employees can expect a $300 raise each year they work for the state. That's less good. <laughs> Inflation's exponential. This is, you're gaining 300. You're adding 300 to your salary every year. That's, that's not it. All right, so this is like, we're adding. It's going to be linear. It's not this one. That's not exponential. C, tuition costs have increased by 2.8% each year. That's probably low. That's probably low. <laughs> that's probably an under. A, <laughs> that's probably a, it's probably not accurate. Tuition probably going up faster than that. But anyway, let's say if they have gone up by oh by that much percent every year. Okay, it's growing by two point eight percent every year. Yeah, that's exponential. So a and C are our answers here. B is linear. Example three: a certificate of deposit otherwise known as a CD. Uh, it's a type of savings account offered by banks. And basically what it is, it's going to be a higher interest rate than your regular savings accounts. But uh, you do have to keep your money in there for a fixed length of time that you can kind of choose. The longer you choose to leave your money in there, the higher the interest rate you're, you're going to get. Um, and if a bank offers a 24-month CD with an annual interest rate of 1.2%, and if it's compounded every month, how much will a $1,000 investment grow to in those 24 months? So this is really touching on something we're going to talk about more in chapter six with finance applications, but this is a very common thing. Okay. So first off, right off the bat, I want to say that we're not actually growing by 1.2%. I know it says the interest rate's 1.2%, but we're not, we're actually growing by more than that. That's the difference between APR, annual percentage rate, and APY, annual percentage yield. We'll talk about more of that in chapter six. But if you ever heard APR, APY, curious, what's the difference between those two? You might see one on a loan or two numbers. You're comparing two different loans or credit card um, interest rates or investment things. We'll talk about those. This is an example of an APR of the rate. APY is kind of like takes into account the compounding. Anyway, so um, how, what is, our, let, uh, I don't know, let's, let's, let's just look. Okay, you know, y is a times one plus r to the x. Let's start with the basics. This is, you could use the, the one with a b too. Both forms are going to work here. We know it's growing 1.2% in a year. But when it says compounded monthly, what that really means is that 1.2%, and this is how like mortgages work, if you're curious about that. If you have a, like say you got a mortgage for like a 7% interest rate, which is pretty normal for right now when I'm recording this, um, that 7% interest is broken up every month. So you have to pay a 12th of that 7% every month. So it's going to update every month. Again, that's more chapter six, but it's... That's the cool application for this stuff because um, a lot of people think about mortgages, although with current housing situation, <laughs> people are not thinking about it as early as they were thinking about it years ago. Anyway, really getting distracted today. I like chapter six, and that's why we're here in chapter five, so we can get there. Anyway, so what's the starting amount? 
A is the starting amount. We're starting with $1,000. So we're not actually growing by 1.2% every month. Let's let X be months. So our, our exponent's going to be 24 because we're curious about how it grows over 24 months. If it's 1.2% a year, that's 1.2% getting divided into 12 pieces. 1.2% is this as a decimal. So this is our answer. We'll just have to type it into a calculator. 1.2% every year, but we're splitting that interest up into 12 months. So each month, it's only a 12th of that. All right, so what this kind of approximates out to, if we use a calculator, 1.2% over 12, let's use a calculator. We start with 1,000. We have 1.2% split up into 12 pieces. And we're having that go, grow for 24 months. So we'll have $1,024.28. That's how much we'll have. We'll gain 24 bucks. Fun little fact, CDs used to be much more profitable, um, at least as far as I'm aware. Getting a 1.2% interest rate is not so good if, if inflation is 3% on average. Recent years, inflation has been more than that. <laughs> but it's still better than a regular savings account. So if you need like um, liquidity, like uh, if you need to be able to get something out at a certain time, it's not as good as a savings account, but it's still better interest rate. So it's kind of like a mix, like a middle ground for investment purposes. Um, anyway, and it's, it's safe relatively, all things considered. All right, slow down, Jason. Focus on the exponentials. Don't get too excited about the applications. Try it now. Pause the video and see if you can do this problem. We have two equations. They both represent growth of investments after two years. Which account is growing faster? Well, look at what form these are in. These are in the form A times B to the X. A is the starting value. B is the growth factor. So, or you can look at it as Y equals A times 1 plus R to the X. So that's our growth rate. So you can see this is growing by 5% every year, 1 plus 5%. This is growing by 7.5% every year. This first one starts with $1,000 invested. The second one starts with $900 invested. So it wants to answer which is growing faster. Well, this is growing by 7.5% every year. Okay, so this has a bigger growth rate. B has bigger growth rate. Growing faster, relatively speaking. Maybe it's not increasing by as much in the first year. I don't know. But that's what it's asking for. And after three years, I don't know. You, you could calculate them, plug in three on both. Let's visualize it. 1,000 times 1.05 to the X. And 900 times 1.075 to the X. These are our two accounts. So let's look from like, I don't know, zero to five years. And we're starting at 900 and who knows. So you can see, right, that, that blue is growing slower. A is growing slower, but it starts off with more. White starts off with less, but it's growing faster. In about four and a half years, they'll be the same value. After that, the second one will be more it has that better interest rate okay but after three years you could plug in three for both of these and get that a is still bigger okay a is bigger after three years but not for long all right that's it that's exponential functions that's how we can use both of these forms Three very different kinds of problems to give some practice with exponentials. Hope this helps, and I'll see you in the next video. Or you'll see me in the next video. I'm not, I actually can't see you when you're watching these videos, which is, it leads us down a very weird. <laughs> Bye.